Amen. Amen. Please be seated and welcome. As I've said, today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. After being initiated into ministry and affirmed by God through baptism, Jesus equipped his first disciples to join him, to join him to proclaim the good news of God and minister to the needs of all people. The journeys of Christian people have been initiated through the sacrament of holy baptism ever since. The sacrament of baptism is essential for Christians because it is in fact that spiritual mark of Christ on our souls and through it we become members of the body of Christ, the family of Christ in the church. The inward transformation of baptism makes us outwardly accountable to be ministers, to be ministers of Christ's words, of Christ's actions, which include loving God above all things and our neighbors as ourselves, which include reconciliation with God, restoration of the world to God with our help, and unity with one another as best we can. In the earliest times of the Christian church, when the, new, the newly baptized were marked as Christ's own forever, as I told the kids earlier, you know, you'd go into the river, that's how it happened, she or he became marked by society as an outsider. Back then they were outsiders, they were subject to persecution and sometimes even death. To become a Jesus follower and a member of the body of Christ making ta meant taking a huge risk. Additionally, the journey to baptism required an extensive time of preparation known as the catechumenate. And catechumenate means listening with the ear. And I sort of wonder why they would use that word, listening with the ear, when I'm always saying, oh, we need to listen with the heart. Well, apparently not. The catechumenate was, listen with the ear. Maybe it's closer to your brain and then goes into your heart. <laughs> the instruction focused on the life, the death, and resurrection of Jesus, as you might imagine. But it also focused on the renunciation of the existing cultural world views, such as the disbelief in a universal, in the Greco-Roman gods and the belief in a universal God. It was countercultural because it, Jesus said, leave your family, leave your possessions and follow me. It was countercultural because Jesus spoke of the separation of government from the kingdom of God. The separation of the kingdom of government from the kingdom of God. And even the renunciation of the power of magic. The catechumenate also focused on teaching new morals, values, ethics, and not, not only based on the Ten Commandments, but also on Christ's radical actions, such as loving your neighbor as yourself, regardless who they were and the understanding that the last would be the first in God's kingdom, radical. Incorporation into the body of Christ through baptism meant being born again, and I know that's a term that gets misused in our culture, but it was then the symbol of being born again into this new life. The symbolic ritual for the newly baptized was to put on Christ. And what they did was remove their clothes, their old clothes, and put on a clean white garment, like the ones infants use when they're baptized. They also had a name change. Your name was changed to a new Christian name. And I remember when I did confirmation, I was brought up Roman Catholic, that I had to take on a Christian name, as if Daniel wasn't, <laughs> and that was Martin. 
a complete change of identity. In the reading from Matthew about Jesus' baptism, we hear how God sanctified Jesus in that moment, revealing himself to the Son in the image of a dove and saying, This is my Son, the Beloved. And love is in that word, beloved, in whom I am well pleased. The Hebrew Bible doesn't reference Jesus as Messiah as we would expect. They refer to the Messiah. And God's sanctifying words through the prophet Isaiah carried a similar message to Matthew's. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. God sanctified the Messiah's actions, making him the servant to the world and light to the nations. And we are invited into that servanthood through our baptisms. Now, most of us don't remember the event of our baptism through water and the Holy Spirit. But every time we are a part of a baptism here, we renew our vows. And we're summoned to support the baptized as a community through our presence, and through our prayers. Within the baptismal liturgy, we repeat the baptismal covenant, and we'll do that in a bit. And you know, the baptismal, this, the baptismal covenant is like a job description for Christians. It provides direction for the practical ways to be like Christ in our daily life and work. And I said emphasis, to be like Christ, not to be Christ. We can't. We strive to be. We try to be. Practical ways to be like Christ in our daily life, in our daily work, in our school life. And we express it in a call and response style. And we'll do that again today. Imitating the words and the way it would have been done with the Apostles' Creed, the ancient creed. Uttering these words is, should be a reminder that the old clothes are removed and that we, we wear new gleaming white clothes, which is one reason we, I wear white on a day like today, a celebration. New gleaming white clothes in this earthly journey as we attempt to be more like Christ. You know, the baptismal covenant is also a self-examination that is prayed in preparation for receiving the Eucharist. We do it right before the Eucharist in our order of service. And it is an opportunity for us to be renewed in our heart before we come to communion. It's an opportunity to be renewed in our mind. And it's an opportunity to be renewed in spirit through prayer. It's a prayer. Our baptisms launch our life ministry just like it launched Jesus' life ministry. Upon being baptized, Jesus journeyed into a new direction. I ask you to remember, as people baptized by water and the Holy Spirit, how you will take your baptismal vow today and how you will use it for a new purpose or a renewed purpose in the name of Christ. It's your vow and your responsibility to uphold it. What will it take for you to feel affirmed by God? Think about it as you pray. What will you do to affirm Christ as your center, as your core, as you pray? On this holy day in which we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, I'm reminded of commitment. God's commitment to me, God's commitment to you and to the world. And I'm also reminded of our commitment as the body of Christ to the people of God. Jesus took on the commitment to tell the truth. Jesus took on the commitment of confronting wrongdoing and abuse. He took on the task of not only proclaiming the good news, but of being the good news through his love, which transformed the world. We are his agents now of transformation by baptism and love in our commitment to him. I'm encouraged to know that we are here at St. Gabriel's part of Christ's change. 
and that we do our share at St. Gabriel's to make change a la Jesus, Jesus style. For example, today after church, folks, everyone's invited to pack food for backpack buddies, while the parents of our tweens and teens will meet to decide, to help decide how to coordinate and execute the spiritual formation and the Christian service of our children in our teens, in our adolescents, in meaningful and engaging ways. I'm inviting the parents as well as the kids and the youth in our community to walk the walk. That is our action for Jesus. We are God's beloved, and in us, God is pleased. We are anointed because we are made in God's image. And we are accountable to pray and uphold our Christian vows in the words of the baptismal covenant. It's a covenant. I invite you to allow yourself to be the light of Christ and to be empowered, to feel empowered by the Holy Spirit to continue building the kingdom of God right here, right there, right around your street corner, right across the apartment building that you live in. Amen.